tutorial is for fifth grade, module one, lesson five. In this lesson, we're going to look at the word form, number form, fraction form of decimals. In this first section, I have decimals written both in word form and fraction form, and I need to write them in number form or standard form. You can see for the first problem, the decimal in word form was zero and four thousandths. A couple of clues here. When we read our decimals, we always say and where the decimal point occurs. We don't say point, we say and. So that's one clue. I, I know where my decimal is going to fall. And that also tells me then that the zero will be in the ones place. After my decimal point, I know that I have to have a four that lands in the thousandths place. So if I look at my answer, you can see that the zero is in the ones place. The decimal point is where the word and was. And my four has landed in the thousandths place. I have tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So we would read this as zero and four thousandths. For question B, I have zero and 24 thousandths. I know that I will have a zero in the ones place again. My decimal will go where the and is. Now I have 24 thousandths. That means I need the number 24 to land in my thousandths place. So I'll put a zero in the tenths place, a two in the hundredths place, and a four in the thousandths place. So that allows 24 to land in the thousandths place. That also shows me that two hundredths and four thousandths is the same thing as 24 thousandths. So this number is read as zero and 24 thousandths. In question C, I have one and 324 thousandths. So I have a one in the ones place and my decimal point where the and is. Now I have 324 that needs to land in the thousandths place. Well, since my thousandths place is the third place over, I can just write those three digits, 324. And again, the four is in the thousandths place. So this number is read as one and 324 thousandths. Let's skip down to the fraction question. So question F shows that I have zero and 46 thousandths. So that fraction is read the same way as the word form. So I have zero in my ones place and would be the decimal point. Now I need the 46 to fall in the thousands place. So I'll put a zero, four, six. That puts my six in the thousands place. So this number is read as zero and 46 thousandths. If I skip down to question H, I have 200 for my whole numbers. So that's going to be 200 and, for my decimal point, 904 thousandths. So I would just write those three digits because that puts the four in the thousandths place. So 200 and 904 thousandths. In the next section, we're going to fill in some blanks to help us write these decimals in word form. So for question A, I have zero ones and is where the decimal point is. Then if I look at that decimal, I have a five in the thousandths place. So I would read this as zero and five thousandths. For question B, I have 11 for the whole numbers. So there's my 11 and for the decimal point. Now I have 37 that lands in the thousandths place. So I need to write the 37 in word form. That shows me 11 and 37 thousandths. For question C, I have 43 in the whole number section. So I'll write that in word form. And is where my decimal point is. 608, now that eight falls in the thousandths place. So I know that's how I would finish out this number. So I would read that number as 43 and 608 
In the next section, I'm going to look at a decimal and write it in expanded form, both in fraction form and in decimal form. I'll start by writing the decimal on the place value chart. So I have zero and two tenths, four hundredths, nine thousandths. I'm going to take each of those digits, except for the zero, and write them showing their value as a fraction. So my two is in the tenths place. That means that is worth two times one tenth. The four is in the hundredths place. So that represents four times one hundredth. And the nine is in the thousandths place. So that shows me nine times one thousandth. Now those fractions are directly related to our decimals. So two times one tenth as a fraction is the same thing as two times one tenth as a decimal. And four times one hundredth as a fraction is the same thing as four times one hundredth as a decimal. And at nine times one thousandth as a fraction is the same thing as nine times one thousandth as a decimal. We'll do the same thing in this problem. Here I have 57, so that's five tens, seven ones, and 281 thousandths, which is the same thing as two tenths, eight hundredths, and one thousandth. I will write this in expanded form. So my five is the same thing as 50 or five times 10. The seven is in the ones place, so that's seven times one. The two is in the tenths place, so I'm going to write two times one tenth as a fraction. The eight is in the hundredths place, so that's eight times one hundredth. And the one is in the thousandths place, so that's one times one thousandth. I'll do the same thing down below. This time I'll write it in decimal form. I still start off with five times 10 for 50 and seven times one. Now I have two times one tenth written as a decimal, eight times one hundredth written as a decimal, and one times one thousandth also written as a decimal. Finally, I'm going to take my expanded form numbers and write them as decimals. So in question A, I have seven times 10 and four times one. Seven times 10 is 70 and four times one is four. So I know I'm going to start off with 74 and then I'll have uh, decimals following that. I have six times one tenth, so that means I need a six in the tenths place. Nine times one hundredth, so that puts a nine in the hundredths place. And two times one thousandth, so that puts a two in the thousandths place. So this number is 74 and 692 thousandths. And let's do one more. Here I have five times 100 and three times 10. So five times 100 is 500, three times 10 is 30. I don't have any ones, so I'll put my decimal point. And now I have eight times 1 tenth, so I need an eight in the tenths place. Zero times 1 hundredth, so we'll put a zero there. And nine times 1 thousandth, so I have a nine there. So this number is 530 and 809 thousandths. So you can see that the connection here between decimals and fractions and word form, they all mean the same thing.